Alliance for Children is Tarrant County's Children's Advocacy Center program. Every day we see kids that walk in really in a place of being broken. The care team is the medical component of the child abuse program at Cook Children's and so we all work full time in this. The most common is neglect. Under neglect, there are actually a couple of subtypes. So you can have actual physical neglect. Are they not being provided adequate food? So a child that's very underweight, eating out of trash cans, uh, begging for food, stealing food, hoarding food. The other thing that we see are children with really bad hygiene, so they're not getting baths. The other form of neglect would be medical neglect. So if you know a child has a medical condition and they're not being taken for medical care, then it's neglect. We're looking for some subtle signs and then making it your business. At its core, physical abuse can be any unexplained injuries on a child, all the way into child fatalities. The most common form of abuse is bruising. If it's in the pattern of an object, like a hand, a belt, if it's leaving bruises and marks behind, it's too much. I think we also have to look at age of the child. So if you have a child that's not mobile, any bruise on them is concerning. And our under six month age group is at our highest risk of death. So you just have to think about normal child development. When kids fall, where do they get bruised? And if you have a child that's old enough to talk, if they say somebody hurt them, then most likely somebody hurt them and it needs to be reported. When you're talking about sexual abuse, it's not just sex. It can be actual touching with any part of your body on a child's genitals or anal area or having them put some part of their body on the perpetrator, it includes fondling, touching on top of the clothes, exposing yourself to a child, exposing them to pornography, taking photographs of the child in sexually provocative ways. Any pornographic image of a minor is against the law and must be reported. Sexting, right? Sending them pictures of your genitals. Make children act on children. Really exploiting a child in any sexual manner is sexual abuse. Sexual abuse is a little bit tougher because there are usually no physical indicators. So I think you have to really look at emotional indicators. And again, the emotional indicators may be just signs of stress in the family or stress in that child. And obviously if a child has physical signs of trauma to the genital or anal area, bleeding, bruising, a minor that has a sexually transmitted disease or is pregnant, signs of infection, imitating sexual acts that they should have no knowledge of. Those things need to be evaluated. When you consider that one in 10 children are going to be a victim of sexual abuse, it's prevalent throughout you know, every community in our nation. When you see a child being demeaned, made to feel worthless, cursed at, that's emotional abuse. It may be emotional indicators of some developmental delays. If they feel worthless, you're gonna see them acting out. The children that are at highest risk of abuse are the ones that are probably the most difficult to take care of because it creates stress in the family. So those are gonna be children that are helpless, so our young infants, children that are difficult to soothe, so maybe those premature babies, when they come home, children with underlying medical conditions that make them irritable or increase the stress um, because they have such medical needs. The other children at risk are those with um, severe developmental delays. We see high risk also in toddlers because they're difficult to control as well. They're being potty trained, things that people find frustrating. So that's another high risk time frame in a child's life. 